and putting the, um, the rubber screen on. So did you want this one to remain this long or do you want to put it where we're going to... It's the right it? length. Remember it has to stick out four inches okay. from either side. So that one actually came off of a hive you had put it on before. Sorry, bent. That's right, like that, and then it needs to be bent down to uh, hook you to the bottom. To on the bottom. It's whatever works for you. I don't care. Before we've done it by bending it and doing it straight onto that little edge, but it might be easier to do it from the bottom. I think that's about four inches. That's inside. perfect. Yeah. These guys are taking their picture while they're cleaning up the grass. It's going to need more on the top, too. You know it does, right? Yeah, I'm just sort of seeing how, if I've got a fit right Look at that curious bee. I wonder what she thinks about this. Look at you. Now you can get them in. Why can't I do it? I, don't know. I think it's my shaking hands. Could be. Could be. Look at all these bees around you, Jeff. You're just doing great. See, Jeff knows how to keep these. He's done this before. Very nice. You like it? I do. They should like it. Well, they've got a big enough. You they don't want to restrict that no, anymore? No, that's okay. perfect. Okay, so we put number eight hardware cloth on that hive, and we're going to try window screen on this other hive. But see how the bees are confused? They're like, how do we get in? How do we get in? And it'll take them maybe the whole day to figure out where the edge is. But why the bees are drawn to the hive is because of the pheromone of the queen. So they will find it. They will find how to get in. But it'll take them a while, and they're not going to be happy for a while. Look at all of the ones that have been out foraging. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Look at that. But they'll figure it out in a minute. It's just going to take them a little while. And Jeff did a great job with the robber screen. And the goal of the robber screen is to keep robbers out. And what robbers are drawn to is the entrance of the hive. So the four inches on either side will keep them out. Look how many of them have pollen on their legs. This is a great opportunity to observe. Yeah, I think this is a great, it highlights how many are the, the activity. How many were out, you yeah. know, they fly in so few at a time. And now all of a sudden we can see them with pollen in every color. How pretty, wow. That was virtually immediate, like as soon as I yeah. They'll figure it out. Now look, a few of them are going around the edge. They're like, oh yeah, there's a hole out here. They'll get it figured out. Okay, let's do the other one. So this one we're going to do window screen on, right? Yes. Okay, so here goes Jeff with the window screen. A little bit different plan. I'm going to kind of pre-bend it a little bit. I think that's a smart idea, considering that I'm not very good at the, the stapling at all. Anything that you want to do <laughs> is going to be fine with me. If you want to jump up and down on it or anything you want to do. Notice how the Georgia Power guys were here cleaning the hill off when we got here, but of course they don't come anywhere near the bees. So, taking care of the bees is not what they want to do. So do you Jeff want to leave is, that comb? Uh, well, you can take it off now. It, it came out of the hive and they have completely cleaned it out. Isn't that something? It had pollen and honey in it when we took it out and it is completely free of everything now. Now make sure it pulls out a little bit further. That's good, perfect. It's centered well. That's perfect. The advantage of the number eight hardware cloth is that they can stick their tongues through it and pass nectar through even though they can't get in. And sometimes they do that as a way of adapting. This window screen, I don't think it's gonna have that same um, ability for the bees. So we're gonna be interested to see how do they manage the fact that they can't uh, pass it through to their sisters. I'm sorry the Georgia Powers guys didn't clean that off. That would have been helpful, wouldn't it? I think it? it's good. It helps them orient them. Yeah, that's true. It does help them say where is home. Oh, Jeff, you're just a champion with the staple gun. My hero. <laughs> <laughs> Since I am so perfectly horrible at it. Right. All right, you call it out a day? I think it's good. All right, looks good to me. Now let's watch these bees all gather up on the outside of it like, oh my God, where did the door go? See, they've got the same problem, but this lets you know how many bees are out there foraging. And there are certainly a lot of them. And I saw a lot of more brightly colored pollen on the legs of those bees, yes. and I'm not seeing that no. same just neon orange pollen yeah, on any of these. There's one with some really 
grape pollen. Yeah, saw. but there was white. There were two of them with white pollen on there. Oh, like, wow. I think it's been so cool to see. That's one of the nice things about being a beekeeper, seeing how many different colors of pollen there are. And see, these guys are all coming home and they think the door's locked. So they'll figure out in a minute that the key is to go around. I wonder, Linda, can, do you think that their legs that are getting a little bit stuck in this window cloth and uh -oh. maybe the larger... I thought they're crawling on it fine. Yeah. Like this one seems to be a little stuck, but they get loose. They figure it out. Yeah, uh, that, that is a good so that point. That might be a point. Maybe that that's maybe, why this maybe is better that's because it's the better. larger... Just a slightly bit larger, but... Yeah, but that's a really good point, Jeff. Well, I have more number eight at home. If this looks like, if we come up and find dead bees or something. Um, but look at all the pollen. Look at the, the uh, congestion, that's all I can say. You think they're gonna figure it out? Maybe these bees aren't as smart as those other bees. These are already, I've just saw, I'm seeing them fly around already on the yeah, other half. Yeah, they figured it out. It doesn't take them forever. Look over here, much less congestion, because they're figuring it out. And you can see some of them going around at the side end. They're all choosing the left end to go into. I don't know why. These guys will figure it out too. For a little while, they're not going to be very happy. Absolutely amazing. But if we, I come back at 4 o'clock this afternoon, they'll all be coming in the right end. They've really got a good source of pollen right now. Yeah, they do. I'm going to stop the film now. Manipulate, anti-staple. And... Five minutes later, they still are having trouble. While this hive has figured it out. That may be it. Maybe. I don't know. We may have made a mistake using window screen. I wonder if they... But the pheromone is in the air. It should go right through the window screen. It shouldn't. The pheromone of the queen should go right through the window screen. I, just, I think maybe they just need a couple more minutes. They've gotten much more... Yeah, they're thinned stuff. out. They're, yeah. figure, they're exploring. How else can we get in this hive? But they don't seem to be found in the side door. You see any going in the side? Now. Well, at least the ones that came out that way are going to figure out how to get in that way, we, we would think. Do you know bees don't actually have a brain? Really? They have like ganglia throughout their body, but they don't have an organ called the brain. Huh. And yet they seem pretty smart. This group seems pretty stupid, but the, uh, <laughs> generally they seem pretty smart. Well, the hive is brilliant. Yeah, look at all the colors of pollen on this. And most of them are white. I wonder where they're going for that. But you know, they tell each other, which is why we're seeing more white ones around this hive. But look, they're, they're going to figure it out. It's thinning out a little bit. So now it's all of a sudden like they've got the message. Go around to the side and go under. Not sure how to think about it. So this is Linda Tillman, and we are at the community garden in um, the uh, Virginia Hiles Morningside area of Atlanta. And I'm going to look at this hive. I came over here and sat on this hive for 10 minutes and never saw a bee flying in with pollen. And we were worried about the queen because there were only a few eggs in the hive when we installed this nest last week. So I'm going to look at it today if there's no brood, which I don't expect there to be, We'll take a frame of brooding eggs from another hive and add it to this one so they can make it clean and treat it like it's a split. So there's so few bees flying in and out, but I'm going to smoke the entrance anyway just to say hello I'm here. So I just smoke the entrance. Let me get my hive drape. that have started a nest up here on the top of the hive. Can you see the nest? And when you open up a hive and it has a nest with ants on it, they immediately panic so they're each one picking up an ant baby and taking it away. And there are no bees in the top box because we didn't expect any. We just put this on because it's a the hive. And when we get down here, we can see that there are, they are using two or three frames. One, two, three. They're not doing anything in the rest of the hive. So what we want to see is if all they're doing is storing honey or if they have a laying queen. That's our question for this hive. Let me answer the question. 
So because there's nothing in the second frame, there's no point. I guess I should remove it because I won't hurt anybody putting it back in. So I'll take out the second frame. And see, they, this is such a tiny hub. I think I haven't even probabilized anything. Now our goal is to see if there's any brew. They are definitely drawing wax. So on, on the, this side and both sides, they're drawing wax and making honey. On this back side, though, there is some brood. All right, let's see if you can see it. Let me see if I can figure out how better to show you. Look right there. That's brood. I don't know where you're seeing, so I'm going to move the frame up and down. But those beige coverings are brood. So we do know we have a laying queen. So I don't know why they weren't bringing in pollen the other day, but they weren't. So we're not going to worry about this hive because the queen has gotten to work. Maybe she didn't like the little tiny space she was in in the mood. And she decided, aha, now better space, I'm going to do this. Now look what they've done here. They have made cross comb between these frames. I don't know why, but we're going to get rid of it. <laughs> Sorry about the lawnmower who decided to show up at the neighbor's yard while I'm doing this. But I can talk you through it during the inspection. So I'm cutting out this comb because we don't want them to have it. And I'm going to reverse the location of this frame. I'm not going to take it out, but I'm going to turn it around so that this little thing they've started is not something they will want to continue. Oh boy, the lawn guy is literally right in front of me. He's for the neighbors next door. But I, I, now that I've opened the hive, we don't have a choice. So on this, you can see brood on both sides of this. So much better than last week. Now I'm gonna turn this frame around. You don't need to do that with any hive. But it says to them, we don't like the way you are handling this comb making and we don't want you to do it. So we're not gonna let you do it anymore. It's okay. <laughs> Lots of brood everywhere. The long guy just saw that I was filming and decided maybe he would quit. See the brood? We're very happy about all this brood. This is a small enough hive that I ought to be able to find the queen. But I am terrible at finding the queen. But I'm going to stand here for a minute and try to find the queen. Stanley, you can see me. Have, or see what I'm looking at. Because maybe one of you will see the queen. But look at all that pretty brood. Really pretty brood. Oh boy. This is going to be a great hive and we don't have to move a frame of brood and eggs which makes me happy. I'm not going to keep looking for the queen because it's a little chilly out here. And I don't want the small little hive to have a problem. So there's one other frame for us to look at just to show you that they've started building wax. And the minute they started building wax, they also started using the wax that they're building. They're using this wax for um, honeycomb. You can see the nectar in it. It's full of nectar because that's the way they're going to use it. Oh, I'm so relieved to know that this hive has a queen. That is so exciting and that she's done so much work since last week. Like my little grandson used to say, yay, yay, yay. Okay, now I'm also going to turn this frame around and confuse the heck out of these bees in their housekeeping because I don't like this comb thing they're doing. Now, now these frames that were the errant comb, oh, I'm right between you and the, uh, these frames that were bad comb to bad comb are going to be good comb to good comb and the bad comb, the places where they were 
making those protrusions of bad comb. It's on this side of this frame and on this side of this frame. So that should help stop that. And we'll put the original frame back. So these bees are well occupying three frames of the hive. They're not doing much except to barely start wax on the fourth, but it's only been a week. So we can say, hooray for this little hive. It's gotten going okay, and I am pleased. So that's all we need to find out about this hive, and we're gonna move on to another one. All right, I'm gonna put the top back on. And somebody asked me, so I want you all to see as I'm putting the top back on, this notch always goes to the back of the hive. It allows the bees, if they come up through the inner cover, it allows them, and look, this is a wax moth, if anybody's ever seen it. And he's here because small hives can't defend against the critters that are in the hive, and the wax moth is one of the critters in the hive. There are enough bees in there that if the wax moth started going after wax on the frames that they've drawn, um, they'd be able to beat it back. But but there, if the, if the, because this hive has two boxes on it, that wax moth was hiding out in box number two, which they aren't using. Now, one thing to worry about in this hive is box number two, because I didn't put a, um, a, a ladder in it, and I can't pull anything up from the bottom box today because it's too little, too little has been done in there. But next week, we will move a frame up from the bottom box into the next box to make them feel comfortable to come into the next box should they need to. Okay, so that's the end of our first time. So when you come to a hive inspection, I was a Girl Scout growing up, and I was a Girl Scout leader uh, when my children were little. So one of the things you learn in scouting is be prepared. And when you come to an inspection, that's what you should think. It's like a good Girl Scout. So I came sort of prepared, okay? So I came with a pillowcase because I thought we might need to move a frame of brooding eggs from one half to the other. And up to pillowcase is a way to keep the eggs warm in transit. Um, and I came with two boxes that are ready to go. Oops, but one of them has a frame that the both ends have been eaten off, probably by a rat in my backyard. So. Um, I'm hoping we don't need to use both because I don't have any extra frames in my car. But I did come with two boxes ready to go. You bring your bee, um, your bee, um, whatever you carry your tools in. That's my toolbox for bees. And I brought an extra um, uh, robber screen because I don't, I wasn't sure about one of the robber screens. And hopefully, I started this video by showing you the film of Jeff putting the, the robber screen uh, on a few days ago. But we were worried about the screen wire one for fear that maybe there were some ways that the um, bees wouldn't be able to use it. So I brought uh, a number eight hardware cloth one in case we needed to sub it out. And I brought um, a frame rack that I bought at EAS that I really love and I keep forgetting to use it. So I brought it this time to use. Okay, now we're ready to inspect the actual hives that are, um, that are they're not the other ones in actual hive too. We're inspecting the ones that have been going on for a while. So this is the uh, new cup and we'll look at it first. I'm gonna take you down as low as I can with my work better. Let's get down low and watch the bees coming in. Now the bees do not still like this robber screen. But one of the nice things about it is you can see the colors of pollen much better coming in than you could when we were just trying to catch a glance as they hit the entrance. But you can see a difference in the bees now and the bees that we showed you the day we installed the robber screen. And it's a big difference. They're, they've figured it out. They're not great at it, but they're, they're getting it that they have to go around the side and come in on the edge. And after a while, they won't even land on the top. It'll take them a while. But look at that bee with light yellow pollen and white pollen compared to these bright yellow pollens. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so we can see that the bees look healthy. They're very busy. They're coming into the hive in a regular way. And um, so now we're going to inspect the hive, and I think I'm going to take you to the back again for this. All right, so we're ready to inspect this hive. The first thing I'm going to do is take the little off. Smoke. 
smoker. We'll have a puff puff at the front door. Puff, 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 puff. The wind, as usual, is blowing pretty strongly. So the smoke is a little bit ineffective because as I blow it under the hive, it just goes whoosh and blows away. All right, so I'm gonna take off the top cover. And again, I need my box with all my accoutrement. Okay, so pretty calm. They're just sitting here, life is good. Now, why are we going into this aisle? We're going to find out are they using the new box we gave them? Do they need even another box? And uh, is the queen laying? Those are our three questions. Okay, so we're going to start out with this one, looking at the bees on the... They've figured out the screen better, and I've wondered if maybe it's a better idea to use the number eight hardware cloth rather than the screen wire that we have on the other one, because the bees seem to have gotten it better. And I've brought another piece of screen wire, so... I'm likely to redo that hive screen if I can. Jeff did such a good job on it. Um, so we're going to try looking at this hive, which is the new hive that, um, that, oh, not the new hive. This is a swarm hive that I got from a swarm in Inman Park. Um, I'll see if I can film this better for you. I have trouble with every film I do, but we're going to hope for the best on this one. My smoker has a little bit of smoke left in it. The smoke has really been making me cough, so I'm going to pop a little bit of smoke in here. Actually, it's doing so badly, I'm going to add a little bit more fuel. Okay. I am relighting my smoker, um, and just because some of you may need to see this, what you do when you light your smoker is you put a little bit of pine straw in the bottom and you get it so it's really flaming up. Then you make a tight little ball of pine straw and add that and keep it smoking. And then you add another. I'm terrible at lighting the smoker. So this one's not doing well. There's still some flame in it, but not what I want. But you want it lit from the bottom, so I'm going down there to light it. Put a little bit more in there. two experiences lighting the smoker. One is I have a hard time keeping it lit, and the other is once I put the smoker in my car, stuffed with a wine cork in the front end of it to keep it, to make it go out, and went inside my house, and the next morning I got up, and in the drive over from the, um, when I got in my car the next morning, the car was filled with smoke. And I was like, oh my gosh. And what had happened is the smoker had fallen over in the drive over home and the cork had come out. Residence. 
maybe they think that the honey is something they can feed their young. We take off the inner cover. We have two. We got a new box last week. We moved the box from the bottom up to the top. They haven't done nearly as much work um, on gathering honey as the last time. They've only filled up one, two, three, four frames of, of uh, honeycomb. And one of those was already built uh, from the box below. And we're just going to check this bottom box because we want to see if the queen is laying. She may have had brood in that middle box, but we're going to check in this one just to be sure. I can see that this honeycomb is joined to this one, so I don't think I'm going to take out the second frame. I think I'm going to take out this frame right here, which is number three. I'm saying number three out loud so that I remember it when I get into the hive. I'm going to get ready to put the hive back together. Okay. Okay. A beautiful frame of brood. Brood through the length of the frame. It's really lovely. They're doing a great job. Um, I'll see if I can see any eggs to show you. There's some empty cells, and you don't worry about that a lot. Like, see, you could say that's a shotgun pattern. But at this time of year, sometimes what happens, well, it's not at all times of the year, bees will take out brood that has um, problems, like brood that is um, uh, not healthy, and they'll take it out and throw it away, and the queen will come back and will lay in that, in the space that they have left. So I'm looking to see if I see any eggs. So far I don't. But I do see lots of brood. That's good. That says good things about our queen. And here's an example. See this larva right there? Right there? That's a cell where there was a hole there. The queen laid a new egg. The way I know that is because it's not the same age as the rest of this brood. It's a it's a brood that's about it's a larva that's about to be capped. So this was a hole that the queen filled up with an egg and uh, started anew. Like she has over here in the corners, you'll see new larva growing. There's a big old drone on my finger. Can y'all see him? <laughs> Ouch, I just squashed a bee and she stung me, which she should have done because I squashed her. Oh wait, this is the frame I'm taking out. Now because I got stung, I'm gonna pull the, I mean scrape the stinger out and put my hand in the smoke because the smoke masks the alarm pheromone and will make the bees less likely to come sting me in the same place that their sister did. If they do, then what we'll do is I'll put my gloves on. Okay. Okay, 
this looks like a good frame for us to look at for eggs. But she's got brood all over here. See all that brood? All that's brood. Now let me see in those empty spaces if they're eggs. Really sorry I can't see for sure I think that there are eggs in here so I'm gonna hold it like this so we can look yes there are eggs I can see them now where I couldn't see them before they're right in this area maybe when we're when I'm home we can see them better so we know the queen is laying, so we don't need to stay in this box any longer. And that was frame number three, so we'll put frame number three back. And there's not room for it because I didn't push these frames together very well. There we go. And now we'll put the box on top of it. This box we didn't look in at all, but I don't think we really need to. I don't think we did. Um, they're mostly putting honey in here. We could try looking at one frame. Let's look at this one close to the edge on number two and see what they're doing in this box. They were uh, using this box for honey. And it's a very light frame because they've just drawn the wax. And you can see, particularly in this one, this is very big cells and that's because they're gonna put honey in it. These over here are smaller, so we may put drone brood in that or, brood, or regular brood. And the brood in the center is definitely, I mean, the wax in the center is definitely smaller. And definitely a place where the queen will probably lay brood in here and then put honey around the edges. So this hive looks really good and we're very happy about it. While I was doing this inspection of the first hive, the lawn guys next door showed up and I couldn't close up the hive because I was already in the middle of it um, when they decided to come back to the backyard and do more. So I'm going to show you what I did in that hive, but I didn't, uh, I gave up on filming it because it was so loud. Um, but I'm going to show you what I did. It won't hurt the bees for me to open it for just a second because what I did was really important. And we're going to go back to my house and if I can, I'll film a hive there if it needs a new box. But here is what we did. I did what's called checkerboarding in this hive. They're not gonna like it because I've already been here, but. So this is a new box. And when I added that box to the hive, what I did was called checkerboarding. So this is an empty frame. This is a frame with, with comb in it. This is an empty frame. This is a frame with comb in it. This is an empty frame. This is a frame with comb in it. This is an empty frame. This is a frame with comb in it. Vice versa over here. And this is the new box. This is an empty frame. This is a frame with comb in it. This is an empty frame. This is a frame with comb in it. This is an empty frame. This is a frame of comb in it. This is an empty frame. And this is a frame of comb in it. So, this box had all empty frames. So what I did was set the box down here on this hive cover and took out frames two, four, six, and eight and laid them on the ground over here. Then over here, I picked up, pulled out of this, this hive frames two, four, six, and eight. These are now frames that are in this box that were full of honeycomb but the two, four, six, and eight that I put in 
are all empty frames. And look, the bees are already on them festooning. And in this box, I took frame from number two and put it here. And you can see that it has comb and it's got honeycomb in it. So since they're building honey in this box and this box, the fact that I've checkerboarded so that above this full frame is an empty frame. Above this empty frame is a full frame. Above this full frame is an empty frame. Above this empty frame is a full frame. It tells the bees, wow, we've got lots of room to store our honey. And they will go crazy. Especially this hive, since it's very big. It was very big when I got it. The reason it has put up more honey than the hive next to it, this, the swarm hive, is the swarm hive was much smaller. This was a huge thriving nuke when I got it from Brandon Ty. Now the problem with this nuke is that it's, Brandon has treated bees, so I don't want treated bees. And what I'm gonna try to do is in that little uh, hive that we looked at first, the one that's the um, uh, hive that Julia gave me, it has survivor bees in it. So toward the end of the summer in an inspection, I will kill the queen in this hive if I can find her and put a frame of brood and eggs uh, in from that other hive. But there's a whole process to it if you're trying to raise survivor bees. So first thing you do is go into the hive and kill the queen and leave them for five days. And in those five days, all of the eggs that were in the hive will become either queen cells or be capped over. Then you go into the hive and go frame by frame by frame by frame, and you look at every single frame and cut all of the queen cells so that they can't raise a queen with the genetics of the queen that I killed. Then I take a frame of brood and eggs from the survivor hive that we installed last week and put it over here, and the queen that they raised from those eggs will be have survivor genetics we hope and be able to live without treatment that way the hive can go into the winter without treatment so we'll do that about in july okay so that's the end of this part of the inspection i'm going to go to my house because you didn't get to see the the switching of the boxes that i did on this hive i'm going to go to my house and we're going to see if one of the hives over there needs a new box which they probably do okay we're going to check this hive out at my house to see if maybe it needs a box and I can demonstrate how to do checkerboarding. I want y'all to look at this cool entry reducer that a friend gave me. Can you see it? It has diamonds on it, <laughs> and rhinestones. I call it my Paul Simon uh, entrance reducer. these straps on here because we had really bad winds and I was afraid that the hive would blow over in the bad wind. This is a swarm that was just on its own moved into a box I had sitting on a pile of logs in my downstairs under the house. Didn't have any plans for it to be uh, a home to bees and it just moved in and then I watched it after they moved in and for a few days they were no uh, bees coming in with, uh, with um, uh, pollen on their legs, and so I thought that they probably um, didn't have a queen or didn't have a mated queen. So I, um, I put a swarm lure in the, the hive that was upstairs in the front yard waiting for it, and um, a swarm moved into that hive. So then I had to put this hive up here. Now they have really crooked comb and I don't really care to do anything about it. This is what they built while they were on a slant in the hive in my downstairs. And this is the, these are the frames I moved in. So I don't feel all that comfortable with tearing up their comb to look at the hive, but I'm gonna tear up a little bit of it just so we can see what we can see. So I'm gonna start by tearing up this frame. The sec the second, the, I'm gonna take the last frame out. It's against my rules to take out the frame next to the wall. But I'm gonna do it because the frame next to it is hooked to the frame next to it. And this one's hooked a little bit, but not a lot. So I wanna get a little space in here to see what I see. Okay, so here are the bees with new wax that they've drawn. It's very pretty. It's really new, so you have to be really careful with foundationless frames because they don't attach them at the bottom not to make the wax fall off. So I wanna see, are there eggs? Oh, there are eggs just all over the place in this frame. Let me see if you can see them. They're in this section right here where my finger is. So I'm gonna stand real still and maybe when we're looking at the video, we can see it, we'll see. 
Okay, so taking that one off as our starter, and I forgot to get my frame wrap. This have unfortunately doesn't need a new box. I've been stealing frames of fruit and eggs from it, treating it almost like it's a new hive um, for various other problems that I've had at other hives. I have hives at the Spark Elementary School and we aren't allowed over there. So the one day we were allowed there, um, we, we discovered it had no queen. And miracle of miracles, we went, I came home and got a frame of fruit and eggs from this hive and took it back to the school. And while I was installing it, their virgin queen who had gone out on a mating flight returned to the hive. I've never seen it before in 16 years and all the bees stood at attention while she came into the hive. It was just amazing. Um, but we left the frame of brooding eggs in there in hopes that they will be okay. You know what? All of these frames are hooked together and I'm not gonna, uh, this is the kind of box that what I'll do is leave this box and in the, on the bottom of the hive as they go into the winter and they will, um, they will move up and then I can clean out all this crooked comb next year. So this hive doesn't need a new box and I don't know why I'm in here with you all, <laughs> except we did see good eggs, so that's good. And I didn't get to show you checkerboarding because of the dumb thing that was going on with the lawn people. But um, I'm gonna put this back over here and I can show you a comb repair on this one because I can see already that we're gonna have a problem in this box. And I don't want them to have a problem. I, want, I need to teach these girls. I didn't teach them at the beginning. So they felt free to build bed comb in the frame below. And they're actually paralleling it up here. So we don't want them to do that. So I'll show you what's happening. And then I'll show you how we're gonna fix it. You see right here, they've joined this. They've made a kind of crooked comb and they've joined these two frames. But this is a little bitty thing of wax and not big. So I can probably, did I make everybody seasick? I can probably fix it uh, pretty quickly. So I'm gonna take out that frame. Just the third one in. Killed a bee in the process, which I feel bad. She was bringing pollen home. Okay, so we're gonna pull this frame out. You can see how they're extending it too far on this side. So what we're gonna do just right off the bat, right this minute, is put a big rubber band around it. It's, they're doing it for honey, but I don't want them to get crooked in this box like they are in the box below. Because that's gonna be a problem for me for the entire of bee season because I let them hang out in that box down in the basement and didn't pay attention to them and catch them early enough. So we're gonna put this big old rubber band around this to hold this comb in. And then I'm also gonna put a piece of rubber band around it that way. it a little bit and then I'm going to get another one. I know y'all are thinking, gosh, it looks like a lot of work to have foundationless frames, but the payoffs are so many that I'd much rather have them than not. Even though you do have to every once in a while work with the bees to try to get them to understand what they're supposed to do. Okay, and now we're going to turn yeah. this around so that they don't get to go with whatever guidelines we're inspiring them. Can you all see that? Oh, she's gone, Never mind. There's a beautiful bee with pollen on her legs. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do in this hive because they don't need a new box. And we're gonna put it back together. I can't remember if, if I've said, but this notch goes at the back. And now we're gonna look at the nuke that I installed last week that came from Julia. 